everybody, I'm Lisa Roberry, your independent Sensi consultant. Welcome back to my channel. Well, friends, the time has come to do the very last Q&A for the year. That's right. It is time for the, the December Q&A um, where we are going to be answering some questions that you have for me. Um, I love doing these kinds of videos. I will just go ahead and give you forewarning. These videos are always long, so if you don't do long videos, I do apologize. <laughs> um, I really enjoy watching Q&A videos and I really enjoy doing Q&A videos. It just gives us a chance to kind of get to know each other better. Um, I like, I say each other because I know you're asking me questions, but a lot of times you guys are sharing with me your experiences on, on certain topics and things and it's just, I love it. Like I said, it give, gives us a chance to kind of get to know each other on a different level besides just Sensi. Um, I am a total open book, so if you have any questions, whether it's Sensi related or dog related or marriage related or just whatever, I'm a total open book and there really are no questions that are like too much, too personal, what what have you. So if you have a question you'd like to see on the next Q&A, feel free to send me a an email if you would like um, at roberrywax at gmail.com um, or you can always leave your question in the comments of this video if you would like. I also, what I started doing the last Q&A was I actually asked um, over on Instagram if you had questions for me. I didn't do it this time just because honestly, this was just kind of a spur of the moment recording time for me. So I didn't really plan this out at all. Um, but I know that we are going to be doing a Q&A in January for sure. And I say we because Sean is actually going to be doing the Q&A with me and we're going to be doing it live. So we are going to be live here on YouTube in January. January. I have to double check the date, um, but I will definitely give you plenty of notice. And like I said, it's going to be live. So we will officially be like on the hot seat. Um, I want to say tentatively, I want to say it's January 15th. I'll either, if I know for sure, I'll put it on the screen here or I will definitely post it in the community tab here on YouTube as well. Um, but that'll be kind of fun. So I think going forward, Sean and I will be doing these Q&A um, sessions together and we'll be doing them live, which will be super fun uh, because I know a lot of you have questions for him too. So I, I hope you guys will enjoy that. So without further ado, like I said, these videos are typically long, so let's go ahead and dive right in. So like I said, if you um, have questions, I receive them either via email in the comments section of this video. Like I said, I also have a few questions from over on Instagram last time as well. So first, I think we'll go ahead and kick off with the email that came in from my friend Ari. Hi, Ari. So she says she has a couple of questions about the doggies. So because of them being German Shepherds, in case you are new here, hello and welcome. I'm a dog mom. I have two beautiful dogs. Um, I have Ranger, who is a purebred red and black German Shepherd. And then we have Zoe, who's my floof monster. <laughs> she is German Shepherd and Husky mix. So um, so there's a little backstory in case you don't know. Um, so because of them being German Shepherds and Husky mix, mix for Zoe, do you guys feed them regular dog food or make them human type food? I know someone who doesn't buy dog food. Her and her husband make their own dog food and meat and veggies, um, etc. every week. And they say it can be a little bit more expensive but it's not going to have all the fat and hormones and all the like extra additives in it my sister also recently bought a bought dog food that had salmonella in it Ooh, and they had to go out of their way to find a different dog food because they have a purebred uh, pocket bully puppy apparently certain breeds need certain types of food so that's why i'm asking what you guys do so for us, we do the dry dog food. Uh, we don't typically give them any human food. Um, German Shepherds, and honestly, I feel like dogs are like people, right? So like, even though you may have a certain dog breed, you may have one particular dog and you've like, for us, we've pretty much always had German Shepherds, um, but we may have one German Shepherd that is way more sensitive than the next. So, you know, they are like people, but I know there are a lot of like common similarities with each breed. Um, and I know that for German Shepherds, typically they will have some food sensitivities, um, a lot of times they will have those sensitivities will react on like their skin and their coat and things like that. Um, for us, Ranger's, Ranger's fine. Like he eats absolutely anything. For Zoe, for the longest time, and I can't remember if Deuce was like this too or Paige was, I feel like 
one of our other dogs was pretty sensitive to this as well but um we noticed that she was getting really super itchy um really itchy and to the point where she would scratch her ears specifically so much that they would bleed and we were doing everything we were giving her baths we were trying to figure out what was going on testing her to see if she had any mites or anything um our dogs stay indoors so the chances for mites are you know they're, they're not picking up things from like out if that makes sense um did all the tests and everything this was years ago and then narrowed it down to her having like a poultry allergy so we try to stay away from like poultry in the dog kibble and something that our vet had educated us on at that point which makes total sense now is you want to look whether you are feeding them people food and you're making like their and i'm not saying people food like table scraps but like if you're actually making your own dog food yes it can get expensive for sure um but kind of keep in mind what dogs would eat in the wild like they're not going to be eating corn right they're not gonna be eating corn and carrots and things like that so like you're gonna want to pay attention to like the types of proteins and stuff that they are eating um, and really higher protein than than anything else they're not gonna be eating grains grains are i've heard grains are really bad for dogs just generally speaking um and then yeah just if if you are finding that a particular dog that you have is reacting a certain way when you feed them a certain type of food stay away from that kind of food so we do um get the dry kibble from origin origin i'll be totally honest is insanely expensive but um it's it's really good for our dogs and that our dogs react really well to it um it's really good for their coats they have a frequent flyer program which is great <laughs> um and we just try to stay with we have a like gosh it's called we have a six fish one that's like all like fish different it's six different fishes in the kibble and then like a weight loss one <laughs> because Zoe's a little bit on the chunkier side she's a little husky um so we mix that we mix those two types of foods in together we've been doing that for years and years and if they've always done really well with it so we did that and then i think there was another brand that we have tried before i think it was like taste of the wild i think and basically what we look for when it comes to the kibbles is just really looking at what the actual ingredients are in the kibble um you're, you you want things that you can pronounce and you don't want grains to be the first thing that's that's listed you want a protein um that's listed as the first ingredient and like i said things that you can pronounce so um like i said so for us the only time they'll get like human food is um like when they're sick um recently zoe was had a little stomach thing and bless her heart oh she's like she's the sweetest dog ever um so she was she was getting sick and she, so what would happen we had we our shower is a walk-in shower this is about to get really gross you guys um our shower is a walk-in shower and she knew she had to go to the bathroom and didn't or couldn't wake us up it was middle of the night and she went into our shower and got sick all over the shower <laughs> oh i felt so bad for her so we were like oh my gosh and our dogs are our kids so like we immediately like scooped up some of it took it to the vet they tested it um they were able to see okay we can give her an antibiotic and she should be fine and so the poor thing like she had a few accidents and the accidents that she did have in the house were not on carpet it it was in our shower <laughs> i was like bless your soul it made it so much easier to clean up but um so anytime that like they're sick then we give them like boiled chicken and pumpkin um because those are things that are that are good um for zoe because she shouldn't have chicken um the the pumpkin mixed in with a little bit of kibble and that's usually all the like people people food that i'll give them um unless i'm feeling like i want to give them a little treat uh ranger loves cheese he's like the cheese monster it's the funniest thing i've ever seen um like he he, he likes all food but like he has a very special place in his heart for cheese so like if i'm feeling like i want to be like extra generous i'll give him a little like cool piece of cheese but for the most part they don't get table scraps or things like that it's just the kibble um and then you ask if dog food brands um if dog food brands what is the top brand you recommend for this breed i don't think there it has to be a brand specifically like i said we are kind of married to origin um i like it's like once you buy i think it's like 10 bags you you don't get one free but you get like a 
a discount on the next bag or something like that. So um, I, I like that they have that program um, as well as, like I said, Taste of the Wild, I think was another, another brand. I, I don't think the brand necessarily matters as it is the ingredients in the kibble. So just make sure you're paying attention to the ingredients in the kibble. Um, and then she just says, I asked because my husband wants a German Shepherd. Even just a video on any facts about the breed will be super great to hear. Not sure, or sorry, not just about food, but like yard space, vet visits or diet or health or favorite toys or whatever. Um, I'm sure we are not the only ones that would love to see a video about all your faves and do's and don'ts for the breed. Thank you in advance. Um, I think just going into when you are going to be adding to your family four legs <laughs> um just really be prepared for the expense like they they are expensive they're um you know i i i can't say that they're like kids because i don't have kids but um it costs a lot you know they, they're gonna want toys they're gonna want treats they're gonna you know dog food is expensive um you know all of that there does come expense with it but I wouldn't change it for the world. They are such amazing companions. German Shepherds, specifically from my experience, they are so insanely loyal and sweet and cuddly, and I just, I love them. Um, be prepared to walk. They, German Shepherds specifically, any working dog breeds, they need the exercise. And I don't mean just throw them in the backyard. Please don't just throw them in the backyard. That is not, that. that's just, that's not the way. They need interaction. Dogs are pack animals, so they wanna be around you. Um, just be ready for honestly daily walks daily walks we can always tell when they when it's been a few days when our dogs have not had a walk they're bouncing off the walls <laughs> they're bouncing off the walls that's when especially if you're getting like a puppy um that's when they can be more destructive um if you are getting a german shepherd puppy we swear by the kong balls um they're red and they i'll put like a picture or something here they're just keep them busy so those toys that like keep their mind working and keep them busy is so super helpful um because like I said, it, it keeps them busy. So they know, okay, I have to, I'm gonna lick the paste out of the little crevices and then I need to get inside this ball to get the treat. <laughs> Ranger is not super picky. He's just like, I'm just gonna lick all the paste. I'm, I'm good with the treat inside. So what Zoe does is she steals his ball and then steals the treat inside. <laughs> But whatever works like having those like activity kind of toys are super super helpful when you have a dog that needs to drain their energy let's face it all dogs need to drain their energy no matter what breed it is um i do think having a yard is it is a good thing i don't think you need to have a like a large dog in an apartment we had um our first apartment we had a beagle and beagles are you know mid-sized they're they're not huge dogs but they're also not tiny dogs that girl needed a yard like that girl needed a yard for sure so you know i think there are certain situations and cases where apartment living dogs are are just fine but for us for the beagle it didn't work um german shepherds i feel like unless it's like i said a very special situation um they're not really apartment dogs but um you know i know that there could be therapy dogs and you know guide dogs and things like that that's obviously clearly a totally different situation but just generally speaking um a yard lots of exercise they're going to be expensive when it comes time for vet bills and things you got to keep them up to date with shots and you know all of those things um i we poured thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars into deuce when he got really sick um we took him to specialists he had deuce was our previous male german shepherd and um he wound up with a skin condition it was almost like like his his poor skin oh was so awful it was, and nobody knew what was going on our vet didn't know what was going on they did all kinds of tests and trying to figure out why the hair was missing and then it was like his skin was like almost like eating away at itself nobody had any idea what was going on we were going to different specialists and things and he was having surgeries and procedures and all of the things that we could do and it's expensive like like i said thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars and in the long run we lost him anyway like it's just, that's just what you do um i don't know i and everybody's a different type of dog owner but the way we are there are kids and so that's just we just know that that goes along with it if something 
were to happen to Ranger or Zoe, you should see the zoomies in the backyard. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, I'm such a helicopter mom. I'm like, he's running too fast. He's running too fast. He's running too fast. He's going to break his leg. <laughs> I'm just like, please don't. Like if something were to happen, we know we have to take care of it. Like it's just, it just goes without saying. It's just, we take care of it. So that would be my big like PSA for anyone who's thinking about getting a dog. I know, especially like during the holidays, I know it's super common for people to be like, oh, let's go get a puppy for Christmas. Really, really give it some honest thought and, and think about if it's the right fit for you. Um, if you're gonna be gone all day, every day, is that really a life that you wanna have for your dog to be locked up in a kennel or, be locked up in the backyard or whatever that situation is going to look like um yeah so there's that oh my gosh see we're already like so far into this <laughs> but i hope that's helpful but if you have any other questions you you know how to reach me and I'm, I'm happy to talk about it until the cows come home so all right moving right along we are going to address some questions from instagram last time uh because i did ask i did ask you guys if you had questions for me over on instagram um and i i posted that like a little bit before i was filming the q a for november and so some questions came in after i filmed it so i wanted to address them here so um cacti and rose asks pros and cons about moving to idaho so again if you are new here hello and welcome um sean and i relocated from california you can't say that very loud here <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can't say that very loud almost anywhere because everyone from California is like fleeing and moving to like all different states. Um, but we're, we're nice. We're good. We're, we're good people. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we moved from California to Idaho. Gosh, it's been, it'll, it's almost going to be two years, you guys, which is so crazy. I know we were vlogging a lot more then, and we took you guys along in the entire process with us. Um, and we could not be happier to be, well, <laughs> There are a couple little things, but you're gonna have that basically anywhere. We, pros and cons. So pros, we just, we love it here. It's clean. We have four seasons here, which is amazing. Uh, people, for the most part, are nice here. Um, I love living near home office because I can go get local pickup. I can, we can go and have lunch with people from, from home office and everything. It's just, it's awesome. Um, we are near Sean's mom now and um pros pro oh the cost of living oh my gosh that should be number one the cost of living is like way way less like fraction of the price that it is to live in california um across the board like car registration insurance like everything everything across the board it's a fraction of the price here which is incredible so cost of living um i would say cons um Okay, cons would be I had the expectation we were gonna have snow like all winter. <laughs> And I should not have had that expectation. Um, last year we had quite a few more snow days at this point in the year than than last, but we we've had just one like snowfall and it like was a dusting and then it was melted down like the next day and I'm like oh man. So for me that's a con. I wish we had more snow. Um, also I will be told it we have the HOA from hell here. <laughs> which is so insane like th that needs its own video um we are in a very 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 small neighborhood i'm talking 11 12 houses that's it um we don't have a third party company that is the hoa we are the hoa like that's it so you would think it can't be that bad except these people are terrible <laughs> these people are terrible and it's it's crazy like we we all live on acre lots and so like you would feel like our expectation coming into this was like okay we're all just gonna mind our own business like be like be friendly we want to do like neighborhood functions and stuff like that like hey let's get together for a barbecue that type of thing and that's we call it the summer of love like when we all first moved in like there was the summer of love and everyone was like oh you know um until people's true colors started showing <laughs> and it's just it's insane like for us like like I was saying, we walk our dogs like basically every day. We're all on acre lots. We all, for the most part, have fencing. But for some reason, these people here, it used to be three people, but now there's two people. Um, 
that don't believe in leashes and don't believe in leaving their dogs in the backyard. Instead, they will just let their dogs roam around and that drives me and Sean absolutely insanely crazy. We just have a little like circle in our like neighborhood. It's not a through street or anything. So we used to do laps around our neighborhood and get our walks in that way. We cannot do that anymore because their dogs are not on leashes and they just roam around the neighborhood and it's so incredibly rude <laughs> it's so rude and when sean is walking or we're walking and um you know the newer neighbors are like oh it's okay my dog's friendly that is okay can, here's another thing if you're a dog owner or a newer dog owner it doesn't matter if your dog is friendly my dog is not like so to have your dog run up on me I don't want to have to break up a dog fight like I just I don't want to Ranger is very like hit and miss on if he likes you as a dog or not more times than not he doesn't like other dogs so don't have your dog run up on me like I don't want to break up a fight not only that it's just inconsiderate we have a neighbor here who is insanely terrified of dogs she was attacked by a dog as um as she was younger and she's just she's terrified and these people don't care and they luckily live right near the lady who is terrified of dogs and they just let their dog roam around and it's really unfortunate like i'm sure they're nice enough people but they just have zero respect for anyone here um and it's it's crazy and the rules here are insane like we told them we wanted trim lighting for like christmas lights it was turned down <laughs> we are our own HOA. Like we sent them video and pictures of what it was gonna look like and they're like, yeah, no. <laughs> We're like, and we own our house. We don't, we don't rent, we own our home. Um, it's just that, like I said, the HOA is a whole different, it's, that's a whole different video. I could talk on that for seven hours. It's crazy. It's cr and now like everybody's kind of turning on each other. It's kind of sad. Like we do, we have some cool neighbors, but there's a few bad apples that just absolutely ruin the experience living here. So it's pretty sad. Okay, and next question from Instagram. What do you feel is your best and worst trait? This is always a, such a hard question. Um, I would say I am, my best trait would probably be being fiercely loyal, I feel like. Um, I am I am so loyal. Like I just, I, it, I don't want to say it takes a lot like I want to be friends with everybody but to really get in my circle like you're there to stay like you are absolutely there to say um I am I'm loyal like it doesn't matter who you are you're not going to mess with my people um it doesn't matter if you are family it doesn't matter if you are an amazing person it doesn't matter if you're the pope it doesn't matter if you're the president um if you are doing bad things to my people I'm not okay with that um, so I am super, super loyal. I also feel like my worst trait, maybe being a people pleaser. I don't know because I, which I know may sound kind of weird because it's like, I'm fiercely loyal. Like if you do any of my people wrong, then like not okay. But then I'm also a people pleaser. <laughs> so like, I don't want to hit, like, I don't want to be a no girl. Like I want to be like, yes, yes, yes. I want to do this for you. Um, I, I want to do the things I want to, I want to, I want to do it. And I'll, I'll readily take fault for, for things like if, um, like this, okay, this is my worst trait saying, I'm sorry. I say, I'm sorry for everything it drives sean crazy he's like don't apologize like just stop and there there are things that you shouldn't necessarily have to apologize for but um i just you know i'll be the first to admit when i'm wrong and i'll do what i can to make it right um but with that that's also not a good thing because people will walk all over you too and i am getting better about that there have been people in my life who have taken advantage and treated me poorly and I'm getting to a point in my life where I'm getting stronger about that. And again, it doesn't matter who you are in my life. Um, you don't treat people wrong. Like you, you just don't treat people wrong. So I am getting better with that. So I don't know if that really answers your question. It's it, That's a hard question for anybody, right? Um, but yeah, so I guess that would be, that would be my answer. What is your dream Sensi collaboration? Oh my gosh. I think it would be super cool. And I haven't really given this a ton of thought. This is just kind of like going off the cuff here. And this is probably going to sound really strange. And I don't think it would really ever happen. I, I don't know. Who knows? Who, who knows? Stranger things have happened. But I think it would be really cool if Sensi partnered with like 
Ford, Chevy, GMC, like I think that would be kind of cool so that way they can have like warmers that look like sports cars and cool cars and things, you know, things like that. I think that would be pretty cool, especially like that little backstory. Sean and I are into in, into cars. We're that's how we met. We met because we love Ford Mustangs and um so I I think that would be really cool. I know we've had, you know, the retro trucks and stuff, but if they could like make a warmer that looked like a Mustang, that would be super cool. And I think you know, you have a little, uh, some warmers for the guys too. So I, th just off the cuff, I think that would be a super cool collaboration if they were to partner with um, like different car companies and come up with, I mean, we did have, it was like a Father's Day bar bundle like a hundred years ago when they had a bar that smelled like burnt rubber. <laughs> um, so like, that would be a cool thing. Like, I, I not that I want my house to smell like burnt rubber, but you know, they could tie in weathered leather in there. And I don't know, I think that would be kind of a cool collaboration, but yeah, I don't know, we'll see. Okay, next question from Instagram. Uh, do you know Dan Orchard? So for those of you who don't know, Dan Orchard is our interim CEO. And yes, I do know him. Um, it's awesome that we, like I said, our location is great because we can just hop over to home office um, and, and do things and, and things like that. But what I love about this company, probably my absolute favorite thing about this company is that everyone at home office or headquarters, it's headquarters, but they never want you to feel like, oh, it's the brass, like the higher ups are here. Now we gotta like, ooh, they don't, that's why they don't call it headquarters. That's why they call it home office because they want you to feel like home. Like when we, we Sean and I just went to, um, it's called Star Director Summit Approach and it's training for several days and for, for leaders and like it kind of gives me chills just to even like talk about it. But when, when she walked in, it not Dan, um, but Sarah, she's a part of home office and she's like very, very connected with consultants and things. And, um, she said, welcome home. Like, I just, I, I just love that. Like, that's just, that's the kind of vibe that they want. And that's why they call it like the Sensi family. Like they never want you to feel like this is some big, bajillion dollar company and that you can't talk to people they are very very accessible and they want you to know that they are there and they listen which is amazing um so yes we went and had the training and everything and actually dan and sean totally hit it off like dan is a super super likable guy anyway super nice super approachable all of that but sean was the only guy that was there <laughs> as far as like in the training and so dan was like talking to us ladies and then he's like and sean men's bathroom is over here <laughs> like you know so just very very approachable we um sat and ate with him we ate dinner with him and um it's just it, they're all and they're all across the board they are all so approachable same with our co-CEOs that are just away for a little bit. They're actually coming back in just a few months, which is crazy. Uh, this summer they're coming back, Heidi and Orville. Um, they are so approachable as well. I have been to, it's called director boot camp, more like leadership training when they were here. And again, like these, these are the people who run Sensi. And when you're talking to them, like you really are talking to them. And I was sharing an experience with Heidi and there was a, bunch of people there are probably 50 60 people in the same room but i was talking to her and sharing my experience about something with her and like she really saw me and we were really having this conversation and it wasn't like she there were other distractions or things it was like she was there in that moment and orville's the same way dan's the same way like they don't hold themselves to like a higher level in any kind of way and they don't want you to ever feel like that um they're super approachable and yes dan is amazing okay uh let's see here next one is any vlogs coming soon i miss them um yeah so i think i am gonna be vlogging here shortly i think i am gonna be picking up the camera and and doing some vlogging here um there's another kind of like comment that came in about that so they will probably be shorter but um i, I do want to get back to vlogging it's just life's been a little bit crazy but things are kind of starting to kind of tame down a little bit, die down a little bit. Okay. And last question from Instagram. Uh, do you think there's a chance maraschino sugar cookie will come back before the new year? Mm, I had, because I saw you mention this, I was like, okay, now I have to smell it. 
Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Um, I, to be totally brutally honest, I don't think so. I, I really don't think so. Um, it would be amazing if they did, but since it didn't, it wasn't re-released as like a holiday brick. It wasn't added to any like holiday collection. Um, I think at this point, I know at this point we're, we're done with holiday launches. Now we're already gearing up for Valentine's Day. We have a Mardi Gras collection. Um, it's there's we're just already projecting into next year. So I think the holiday stuff is done. But that's why I always tell you guys and warn you guys: no scent is safe. Like you cannot assume or hope that a scent is going to come back or re-release. You you just can't. You just can't. Which is why my Scentsy Club is out of control. But. I wouldn't change it for the world. <laughs> so that is it from Instagram. So now we are going to hop over to the comments from the last Q and A. Okay. So this comment is coming in from my girl, Kristen, and she says, Lisa, uh, did you ever smell the scent Neverland? She put teal wax with a like barfing emoji. <laughs> I have, um, it, it's not my favorite. In fact, it's so funny because, um, that's kind of during the time that, well, not when it was released, but whenever I think of the wax, this is what it takes me back to. That's how what's Lisa smelling was born <laughs> because we were actually here in Idaho, um, visiting Sean's mom. I think she had just had surgery <clears throat> and we were trying to be quiet and stuff, but she was taking a nap and we were going through her sensey stuff. <laughs> We were going through her sensey stuff and then Sean, um, he was like, okay, close your eyes, close your eyes. See if you can tell me what the smell is. And I remember the first one was coconut flan and I got it and he was so impressed. So he's like, okay, well let's keep this train going. And so, and one of them was Neverland, which I did not get. Um, but I remember the hints and stuff he was trying to like share with me. I, I think it was like, I think he said Michael Jackson or something because his house was called Neverland Ranch or something, right? Um, so, and I'm like, Michael Jackson, what? <laughs> like, what? Because what? Um, then I'm trying to think of like what what Michael Jackson wax we had. <laughs> I'm just like, what? Um, yeah, I, I didn't hate it, but it w definitely wasn't like a favorite of mine. So, too funny. And I loved like seeing everybody's um, comments on what wax they just can't, they can't do. <laughs> okay. Next one is from Jenna and she says, what was the very first Scentsy product you tried that made you fall in love with Scentsy? Wax and warmers. That was it. So I had never heard of Scentsy before and, um, Sean's best friend, uh, had invited us over for dinner or some kind of like party or get together or something. It wasn't a sensi party. It was, it was like a get together for like the guys and stuff. And then, so <clears throat> we went and I remember walking into their house and his sister-in-law had all these little like lip gloss things like sitting out. And I was just like, Ooh, what is this? Um, and she explained, I'm a sensi consultant now. And I'm like, Oh, what is this sensi that you talk about? And what are these lip glosses? And so she <laughs> explained, these are not lip glosses. These are fragrance testers. And so she explained what sensi was. I'd never heard of it before. Um, gosh, and this was how many years ago? So I joined in 2014. So it was probably 12, probably 2012, cause I was buying it for a couple years. So probably around the 2012 timeframe. Um, and I, I did not know what it was. I'd never heard of it before. And she explained what it was and I was like, Oh, I love home fragrance. Like I've always loved home fragrance ever as far back as I can remember. Like my mom always had candles and stuff and like potpourri and like the house always smelled really good. Um, and I remember my mom would let me like get Glade candles from Target and like I'd burn them in my room and stuff like because I always wanted like just to have like my space smell good um and so I'm like ooh, smell goods I'm here for it <laughs> so um so I and I wanted to support her business so I just got a little like starter like a starter order it wasn't it wasn't a starter kit I didn't I didn't sign up for Scentsy right then and there but it came with like I want to say like two full size warmers and one mini warmer or something. I, I, that's what I want to say. I want to say it was like six bars and I got like three warmers. Not that it was a bundle or anything, but that's what I wound up getting is um, two full size, one mini and like six bars. And I know in that was Surfer Chick, Simply Vanilla. That's all I can remember. 
because those like really stuck with me and I was just like wow this stuff is amazing so it was it was wax and warmers we had more than wax and warmers back then it's definitely not to the degree of what we have expanded to today but it was wax and warmers and it was surfer chick and simply vanilla that made me fall in love love it uh and I'm trying to the mm, the mini warmer was fizz it fizz fizz white with like little like bubbles on it i think i actually still have that warmer um and then boho chic and what was the, and was the other one the zebra i think the other one was the zebra print i think that's those i think that's what it what it was um and then i never i never returned back <laughs> i was like all right sensi lifer here we go okay next question hi again i have another question what are you and sean watching on tv these days do you have any recommendations for good tv show or movie okay um we are really into food into food um shows so we love like master chef hell's kitchen um the great food truck race um we watch like when we're eating breakfast on the weekends we'll watch the kitchen um we watch chopped and all the guy shows we, we watch guys grocery game triple d um we watch next level chef all the gordon ramsay shows <clears throat> we watch all of that for like i don't want to say heavier shows but for like more serious shows i guess love yellowstone um we suits oh my gosh if you have is it on netflix or hulu i can't remember which one sean does all, all of that all that seriousness um suits it is so good oh my gosh so good um it's not on anymore but start at the, if you haven't seen it start at the very beginning work your way through it is amazing suits is amazing um we're also watching the squid game um what else we love all kinds of shows big brother i am a yeah here's there there you go <laughs> i am obsessed with big brother we used to watch the bachelor and bachelorette got away from that a few years ago um what else those would definitely be like our favorites oh, big brother sean sean can live with or without big brother i'm here for it though i love it um oh we're, we're still watching like jersey shore and all the family vacations and all that stuff <laughs> um yeah yeah so those would be those would be the shows yeah but like when we really want to sit down and watch um it'll be like usually suits yellowstone squid game yeah those um we also we finished up the mayans uh yeah so that's the it's such a variety <laughs> such a variety as far as movies i can tell you oh my gosh so just the other night we had a movie night and um sean will usually he likes to i don't know he, i don't know if it's just he likes to surprise me or he likes the guessing game of it but he's like okay let's do a movie he's like do you want to watch a military movie do you want to watch a comedy do you want to watch a comedy kind of feel good movie or like a thriller and I, I was just, I was like, you know what? I want to laugh. Like, I, I want to laugh. Um, let's do, and I, and I always like feeling good. Let's do the comedy feel good. This man puts on a man called Otto. <laughs> I was like, I was bawling the entire movie. I was like, oh my gosh. Which, and he did say, he was like, wow, this was, done. and I was like, feel good? This is a feel good movie? He's like, well, and granted, like, I love the movie. I do love the movie. Um, I do, I have such a like special place in my heart for Tom Hanks. He reminds me of my dad. And so that's like, that's why it also was like really hard because I lost my dad a few years ago. And so it like just made it like, and I, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody if you haven't seen it, but just if you are going to watch it, if you haven't seen it, just make sure you have a big, huge box, like Costco size box of tissues. <laughs> and like, he just, he reminded me of my dad and stuff. And so I was just like, oh my gosh. And so... But he, he was like, okay, to be fair, like the trailer did not say like half of the, the things that, that happened. <laughs> he was like, so I did not, because they do paint it to be, and I, I actually posted it on my Facebook and everyone who commented was like, yeah, like this, the, the trailer totally like led this movie in the, a totally like wrong direction. <laughs> um, I love Tom Hanks. And like I said, it is a great movie, but you just, it, it, you're gonna cry you're going to cry. <laughs> it's 
<laughs> so so there's there's that little like warning i guess for you um i'm trying to think of any other like good movies we've all the equalizers we we equalizer the all of them they're fantastic we went and saw the equalizer three in the movies for the first time since i don't even know the last time we actually went to the movies um but when equalizer three came out we we're like yep that's happening um but yeah all all of those so good um okay next one is from my girl tammy and she says i'm surprised you didn't remove the ovaries as well referring to my hysterectomy in case you don't know. Um, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't remove the ovaries as well. Is there a reason why you didn't? I had mine at age 45 and had a complete and no hormone therapy. I've done great. That's so awesome. I'm so glad you haven't had to do hormone replacement or anything like that. Um, my doctor and everyone is going to be a little bit different. My doctor saw that there were more benefits to keeping the ovaries and not even necessarily for hormone replacement, but there were studies done that um, and again, I, I, this is just what I, my, my medical team had told me, um, that there's more benefits in keeping them. Um, the chances of having early onset dementia, Alzheimer's actually is increased with the removal of the ovaries. So that was why she wanted to keep it. And, um, she also didn't want me on hormone replacement therapy in my thirties. So, um, I'm so glad that you don't have to do the hormone replacement. I'm so, so glad she did say it. So, um, I, I, I do have endometriosis. Once you have a hysterectomy, the endometriosis doesn't go away. Um, but she said, as long as like the ovaries are not super scarred and if they look, if they look decent, um, and the scarring isn't too bad, then I, I will leave them. But if the, if the endometriosis, um, scarring is too bad that i will go ahead and remove them so she she wanted to do what was best for me physically uh <clears throat> and i i trusted her one million percent so she said they looked good enough to stay so she figured it was better to just leave them so that was why it was just what was suggested for me um i was just like if that just means that i can i mean i am still kind of struggling with the cysts and i am still going to do a two-year update so that's actually probably going to happen in the, in the next couple days. So if you want more like details and stuff about my hysterectomy, definitely stay tuned for that. But, um, I just, I totally trusted her. And for me, it was, um, the severe periods and the pain and all of that. Um, and she saw that, you know, the keeping the ovaries was going to be benefit me more than like be a burden. So I, I just trusted her. Okay. Next one is from my friend Michelle and she says, Lisa, you had mentioned something about black raspberry vanilla wax to clean the warmers. How does this work? How long do we let the wax burn and how often do we have to do this before it's clean? Great question. And I actually did like a live demo, not live live, but I actually did like a demo of how quick this actually works in a previous video. It, it was, it was a couple of years now because it was in our old house, but if I can find it, I will link it down below. I'll also put a card up here on the screen if I can find it, if I can remember. Um, but yeah, so it, it works instantly. It's amazing. It's the most amazing thing um, to clean your stained warmer dishes. You can just melt the black raspberry vanilla wax and it works literally instantly. Like I did it in a video and <laughs> I will always remember my girlfriend sending me a message right after that video went up and she was like, I have to tell you, like it kind of killed me a little bit to see you actually melt down the wax. And as soon as it was pulled out, you removed it. Like it still had fragrance and you just wasted the wax. <laughs> I'm like, I know, I'm sorry. Um, but I just wanted to show that, you know, it can, it can work that quickly. Um, not that I'm suggesting that you do that, but you can absolutely leave it in, in your warmers, melt, enjoy it. When it no longer has fragrance and you're ready to change out the wax anyway, you can remove it and it removes the stains as well, which is amazing. I love that. It makes no sense whatsoever because it's a dark purple wax, um, but it's a stain remover. It's the strangest thing. Like I said, if you want to see it in like real time, check out the video. It's, it's pretty crazy. Um, and then you're not having to like go through the actual like cleaning process. I mean, it's, it's not the cleaning the dishes is not that big of a deal. You can use, um, counter clean or alcohol, rubbing alcohol works great. Just make sure the dish is nice and, and warm, nice and hot. Um, and then it takes it off super, super fast. 
or you can use black raspberry vanilla wax. So, um, okay. Next one is from my friend Karen and she says, mystery bundle wax, least favorite scent. Uh, and I think she's asking me what's the least favorite scent I've gotten from a mystery wax bundle. I think maybe, um, she says the worst scent for me is grape. I'm still not sure what, what will better it. Any suggestions? So for me, it's also grape. I don't do grape scents. Um, that one. And then the white grapefruit, which somebody else actually had said that they can't stand white grapefruit that it, it, cause it smells like pepper. It smells like black pepper to me so strange um and then great i just don't do grape scents i just I, I don't i don't know if it's cloyingly sweet i don't know if i just don't like grape things i just i just don't um so yeah i i totally feel you there on that um i actually had someone send in a suggestion for a mix suggestion for a grape like a grape mixer and if you have graham cracker crunch because it has that like peanut butter note in there it becomes like a peanut butter and jelly kind of vibe there i think anything for me if i'm if i'm thinking of a mixer for grape i'm thinking anything bakery something that's going to be heavy rich and very bakery just to kind of like mellow out that grape scent um that's my own personal suggestion but if you have graham cracker crunch i would totally try that mix okay and next question comes from my friend kelly and she asks will meant to be merry be available in december i hope so um yes here we are in December. Meant to be Mary is still currently available. Um, you will have a couple of months. So, but I would just say if it's one that you just love and you can't live without, add it to club, or you can even buy it. You know, you can still buy it this month. You can still buy it next month. Um, but get get yourself a bundle to hold you over. Um, but even if you set up a club for quarterly, getting like one or two bars quarterly, then you're gonna be set. And then Sensi will continue to make it for you even after they discontinue it. So. Um, so I hope that helps. Okay. Next one. Um, this was the comment that I did want to address like regarding the, the vlogs, um, is from my friend Kelly. And she says, I would like to say maybe not the super long vlogs, but like once every three weeks, maybe like a 30 minute vlog, um, just to check in and see how y'all are doing, how the pups are doing and something just like that. Just a thought, have a wonderful Christmas and enjoy your family. I appreciate that so much. And that's, I think that's the thing is that I, I think I, no, I think this would be my worst trait. Here we go. This is my worst trait. I overthink everything. <laughs> I overthink everything. And I'm like, it's got to be like earth shattering content or no one's going to watch. Guess what? Nothing on my channel is earth shattering content. <laughs> and I am well aware of that. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know why I overthink everything I can easily just do. And, and it was actually your comment that made me realize yeah, I can just do a quick check-in and like, I don't know, show you our Christmas tree and show you the dogs and just t have story time about what a terrible HOA we live in <laughs> and show you our flag that we just added to our flagpole that says defund the HOA. Stay tuned for the next vlog. <laughs> so yeah, um, I, I think I just, I just overthink it and I'm like, oh, we, we've got to show so many things and we don't, we don't have to show so many things. And actually it would make things more simple if we just do just a quick day in the life thing, make it 30 minutes to an hour, call it good. Okay, um, let me see here. And next one is Jim Bob. And question for the next Q and A, how many warmers do you have on per room? So this room's a little bit different because it is my filming room. So I have way too many warmers in here than, it, than is necessary. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine, 10. I have 10 warmers in this room and they are all on. They are all, um, they do all have wax in them. Um, this is not typical. <laughs> so in our guest room, we have one warmer in Sean's office. There are two warmers. Each bathroom has a mini warmer. Um, in my little like office cubby situation, I have a full size warmer in our kitchen. There are three warmers in our like living room entertainment area there are two warmers and then in our entryway typically there is one warmer in that room um wall fan diffuser in our midi in our um mud room and then we also have air purifiers in every room as well and then our master bedroom has three warmers one two three three warmers um so in that and that's gonna change that's gonna change from season to season like i'm actually um in my entryway for christmas i have way more than one um i have like four like 
four or five warmers because they're like my little Christmas tree farm. So, um, yeah, so that it's, it's going to change just based on what I have out for the season and if I want to change things around a little bit. So, um, but typically, like, it's usually like for like what's realistic for a room of like this size would be like one or two warmers, I think. But it, for our kitchen and, and living room area, that's um, it's an open concept, like, it's all one big space. We've got high ceilings, and so. I do want more warmers because I want to smell my scent with every breath that I take. <laughs> so there's that. Um, I hope that helps. Okay, um, next one is, hi Lisa, my question is, if you could pick any bar from a limited time only collection to become a bar in the regular catalog, what would it be? I would choose Rum Pum Plum and Vanilla Barnwood. Love your videos, thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, I love Vanilla Barnwood. I think that would be an amazing one to add to the to the catalog as well. Um, I think for me, and uh, I would I would definitely want Sanderson Sisters Perfectly Wicked. But I think they if they were going to add it to the catalog, it would have to be like either in the fall. Obviously, it'd have to be in the fall and winter catalog, or they'd have to like rename it and just add it. I I reach for that scent all year all year so it's not like a super seasonal scent um i also love dumbo you guys know i love dumbo dumbo was a part of the the permanent catalog so that's why i didn't like add that um i would say for the limited time collection for a, a scent that is added to the catalog year round i would say from the international wax collection um the pacific sandalwood do you guys remember this bar? This was, like I said, from a few years ago. Um, it's very, honestly, and it's funny, I'm just now realizing, this is very, very similar, in my opinion, to Vanilla Barnwood. Gosh, it's so beautiful. It is so, it, maybe, maybe not. I'm smelling, oh my gosh. There are, like, a few similarities, but this, mm, so beautiful. It is, it is in my club. It'll stay there forever, but... I would be super, super happy to see Pacific Sandalwood get added into the just the regular catalog all year. Spring, summer, fall, winter. This is beautiful. Mm. So beautiful. Love it. I also liked uh, from the same collection, Salt was it Salted Lavender? That was a really pretty one too. We've done some really good scents for like a limited time and that's, that's why my club is a disaster. <laughs> so that would be the scent I would choose. Just like just picking, I think that would be the limited time scent I would add to the catalog. Okay, um, next one is from my friend Debbie, and she says, Hi Lisa, I don't know if you've answered this before, but do you and Sean come from a big family? Do you have a lot of people to buy for for Christmas? I love the Q&A, first sniffs, and all other videos you do. I really like the ones with you and Sean, as I love to see Sean's expression, expression for the first sniffs. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate the love and support on my channel so, so much. You guys have no idea how much this means to me, because um, I, I wouldn't be able to do these Q&As, and my channel wouldn't be running without you guys, so it, the support really does mean everything to me. Um, so for the family question, um, I... So, <clears throat> no. <laughs> we, we don't come from a big family. We don't buy a ton of Christmas presents. Honest and truly, we really don't even buy each other presents. And it's not that like we don't believe in gift giving, like we, we definitely do. But um, we just have always just like, you know, even for our anniversary and birthdays, like unless we're gonna go in on like something together and like make it an, an excuse. <laughs> like if there's something we wanna get for the house or if there's like an extravagant like, I don't want to say trip, but like if we, cause sometimes we like to leave town and go stay in an Airbnb for a couple days and we'll be like, okay, this is our birthday trip or anniversary or what have you. Um, but typically we're not ones to like, just buy like gifts for each other. Um, it, cause I feel like it means more when there's not like a specific occasion. Like if like, that's what, how we've always been like, we'll buy each other gifts when, like when it's like random and he gets me flowers just at random. It's not, you know, just for our anniversary or birthday or things like that. And it's those little, like those little details like that mean so much more. Um, we do celebrate Christmas and we get together for the holidays with family and things like that. But in, in terms of like gift giving, we really don't, we really don't do much for that. Um, and it's, it's totally fine. Like we've always just, like enjoy the holiday for what it is, be with your friends and family. And that's um, really what 
it's all about right um so to answer your question as far as like big family so i the easy answer is no we, we don't have a big family um for me so i have um this is gonna be a surprise for some of you but i ha i'm actually the youngest of four i have um i have two older brothers and an older sister they're half so they were um from my dad's first marriage and um, we were, we've never been really close, but then after my dad passed away, um, that those relationships are completely severed. There's some, something, there's just, you see people's true colors, especially after losing a family member. It's just, it's interesting. Um, and, and I'm okay, like I, I'm okay. I don't, it, like I said, we, we weren't close to begin with. Um, I did grow up with them, um, but we just, we, we were never like very close because they had like the three of them and then I was the youngest and I don't know, the relationship was just never super great. So, um, and then um, I, my dad passed away. My mom is still uh, in California and my aunt i have an aunt in in washington that i talk to from time to time but um sean uh also so sean's mom is here and stepdad sean's dad and stepmom are in california and then sean also has um he has a sister which a lot of you know who she is michelle she's been um in some of the vlogs and stuff from time to time um she actually lives here now in idaho and sean also has um, a half sister and a half brother as well so um they aren't here one is in colorado and one is in texas um, but not again, not like super close or anything. So not enough to like buy gifts for or anything like that. But, um, yeah. And then Sean has a bunch of aunts that are here in Idaho as well. Um, and then he has an uncle in California too. So yeah. So there's that. Um, let me see here. So next one is from Laura and Laura says very much looking forward to the hysterectomy update. My doctor has, this isn't a question, but I wanted to address this. So I hope it's okay <laughs> that I'm like putting this out here. Um, my doctor has said that is, is my best route at this point, but I'm nervous after I had a difficult time with anesthesia during my endometrial ablation. Um, and I know I actually, I addressed your comment, um, right after it came in because I, I am, I am passionate about the about the hysterectomy stuff and you know I, I do feel like it maybe isn't for everyone and I do feel like you do have to be one bajillion percent sure that you want to have it done going into it but if the only thing that's holding you back is your fear of the anesthesia I totally get it but don't let that hold you back if that's if that is it um it, I don't know what your complications were if it's nausea there is definitely something to for that and I have always gone into my surgeries to say um hey I am terrified of being nauseous from anesthesia then they give me medication for that so they're they keep in mind that this is what they do this is this is what got me through the the nerves of the hysterectomy and honestly any surgery um I even just more recently had a procedure done where I was put under and I just, you know, it's no matter what, whenever you're being put under and it's, there's anesthesia involved, you just, you get nervous, right? But what you, for me, what helps me is by thinking, okay, these people, these medical professionals do this all day, every day, all day, every day. This is what they do. And you have the best team with the best, um, game plan for you um so just kind of keep that in mind um if, if that's the only thing that is holding you back don't let that hold you back don't let that hold you back um it, if there's other concerns um you know then that's then that's something else but if it's just the anesthesia of it you can do this i promise you can do this you absolutely can do this um i didn't have an issue with the anesthesia just because in terms of like nauseousness and I, I, I didn't have any issues. Um, they, you know, I, I told them right off the bat, like, I really don't want to be nauseous after, after anesthesia. I know it's super common and they went ahead and gave me something for the nausea and I was home the same night. So, and I was actually going to say, I am, I don't want to say I'm surprised, but I was surprised to see that you were given anesthesia for your ablation because my doctor, now I'm really happy I didn't have it done. Um, my doctor went at giving me the options of like, cause I went in and said, I can't do this anymore. I want a hysterectomy. And 
I think just to be, I don't I think I think they have to give you like the least invasive options first. Um, so when he sat me down and he's just like, we can do an ablation, we can do this, we can do that. So I had him explain what the ablation was. And he, he was honest with me in saying that the fail rate is higher than the success rate, um, but it can buy you some time basically. And during the ablation procedure, you are not put under, at least at the, at the medical facility that I was at in California, you were not put under, you were awake. He explained the process and I was like, no, <laughs> you're telling me it's probably gonna fail and I'm gonna have to be awake for this? hard pass <laughs> hard hard pass no thank you so um yeah i think just i you know have i don't know if you've had a consult it sounds like you probably have but i would write down some questions for your doctor and maybe send an email or have another appointment with your doctor and address those concerns so that way you can be on the same page and not let something that doesn't have to be an issue hold you back from something that can lead you to living a better healthier happier lifestyle okay and now the next question that came in from the last q a was um hey lisa i was wondering if you ever thought since you would start either an empty take back or recycle program mainly to reuse the plastic from cleaning laundry or even pods i personally feel like it's a waste of plastic to just recycle the containers once they're once they're done and you can only reuse so many containers before it becomes ridiculous to hold on to um this has been this has been a question that's been ongoing for years now, and I don't know that they will. I don't know that they won't. Um, I think that would be an, an amazing program to run. I just don't know what that looks like and how like shipping it back to Sensi would be uh, because they're all, all of the bars, every single bar that you've ever purchased from Sensi, no matter what region you're in, if you're in the US, Canada, Germany, wherever you are, every single wax bar that is purchased from Sensi is poured here in Idaho. So I would think that they would probably have to figure out a shipping way to get all of those plastic containers back here to Idaho. And I, I just don't know what that would look like. Like their, their facility is huge. Like it's several blocks. They have several, several buildings. Um, they would have to they would have to build a building just for the empties i feel like but i think it would be a super beneficial program and i know a lot of people would um would like doing that and may even change their mind and support sensing more if they did that um i just don't know logistically how that would work i do agree i think that would be an amazing program to have um super beneficial for sure i just i just don't know what that looks like so um, I have I have heard that quite a bit. I just don't know. I, I just don't know. And of course, if that ever does become a thing, I will definitely be on here first to tell you guys, oh my gosh, it's happening. <laughs> um, but until then, I just I just don't know. We are coming up to the last couple of questions here. So and actually, it's really just one question and then a comment that I did want to address. Um, so this comment, it's good to hear you're doing better. I'm battling endometriosis as well. Oh, sister, I feel for you. I, I seriously, I feel for you. Um, she says, I've had symptoms for as long as I can remember, but really um, had severe issues when I was in the military. My husband was the person who actually said that's not normal. And I, th the reason why I wanted to, to, to highlight that comment is because that's exactly the same for me. I just thought this is what we had this is what we had to do this is what we had how we had to live because this is just this was the card that we were dealt as women um and it was my husband as well i will always remember the exact moment when he was just like you can't live like this like this is not normal because every month he'd be like do i need to take you to the hospital like i I've never seen you like this until the next month and then it's just a little bit worse and he's just like this is not a way to live he's like this is this is not normal same thing he's like this this is not normal and I just thought it was like I just thought this was just this is just how we have to live as women like the it just is what it is um and it wasn't until I went into my OBGYN after after that and I, I honestly told I told Sean I was like the pain that I was the the pain scale that I was experiencing because at that point 
each period that was happening was worse than the month before. And I, when I hit my breaking point, I was like, I'm, I'm not being dramatic because I can be dramatic, <laughs> but I was like, I'm not being dramatic. I honestly, I don't know that I can live through anything worse. I really, I don't think I can. Um, I, I was in so much pain. I was vomiting, so I couldn't, I couldn't take Advil or, you know, ibuprofen or Tylenol or anything to help subside the pain because I couldn't keep anything down. Um, it was, it was terrible. And I just, I was curled up. I, I was curled up one minute. I was moving the next because it's like, it's such a weird for me, the way I, the way I was processing, handling the pain was like, I wanted to curl up in a ball, but I also couldn't stop moving. Like, cause there was something about like the pain, like you just, I don't know. I just, I couldn't stop moving. It, it's the, it's the strangest thing. And I am so glad I never have to deal with that kind of pain ever again. Um, but yeah, it, it was my husband as well. That was like, you don't have to live like this. Like this is not normal. Um, and I don't know why I was just like, okay, <laughs> like finally, like that's all you had to say. This isn't normal. And so I went in and I, I begged my OBGYN and I was like, I can't live through this anymore. Um, and that was in COVID days when you couldn't get your surgery it, like super fast. So I was put on uh, birth control and that was a nightmare too. But, um, yeah, I, I say like endo sucks, man. It really, really does. So if that's an option for you to have a hysterectomy, if that's something you want to do, I think it is the best. I think it's the best decision for most people, not everyone, but I do think it is the best decision for most people. You just live a better life. Like that was no way of living. And I wish I would have really pushed a lot sooner than I did. And I, I like my doctor didn't fight me like and, and that's that's the crazy thing where I'm like, that's it. Like he gave me the other options like we can do birth control forever and ever. Amen. Um, we can do the ablation and when it fails, then we can do something else or we can do the hysterectomy and just like sign me up. I'll do it next Tuesday. <laughs> like, just tell me what to do. Um, so I. I, I guess I should wait until I do the update, but I wanted, I went in for my, his, my, my consult to say, I, I can't do this anymore in June. And I had my surgery done in December. So I was on birth control during that time and it did relieve some pain, but there were other side effects that sucked. So I don't know. I, I think, I think if you're in that much pain, it's worth just doing it. Just do it. Mm. Okay, and the last question we have for the last Q&A for 2023, um, Jennifer says, thank you so much again for answering my questions. I truly appreciate you taking the time to answer. I appreciate you taking the time to ask questions. Um, so this question is, how did you meet your bestie, Mr. Kong's mom? So we met here on YouTube. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of crazy um, and not crazy because I, I've met some of my best friends here on YouTube and because of Sensi and because of YouTube and um, all of that. But like to the point of like, I'll always remember the first time I went to her house and she had to explain to her husband that, oh yeah, I met her on the internet. <laughs> like I met her on YouTube and now she's here in my house. Like it's just kind of weird. So I... I met her because, and here's, I told you, there's no no questions that are off limits. Um, I've had a breast reduction. And when I was looking at, gosh, is that how? Technically that's how we met. I was watching, I was watching, um, I was watching her for years before I actually reached out to her. And I think as a lot of people, I, th I think a lot of people think, at least for me, um, when I was watching, I was watching her, her makeup videos, and I just, I never thought that like she would ever read my comments or that she'd ever want to talk to me. Like, and, and I don't know why it's just cause we're all just people, right? We're all, we're all just people. But I just thought there's no way she, there's no way she reads the comments. There's no way that she's going to have time to like want to talk to me. Like she doesn't know who I am. She doesn't owe me anything. And like, there's no way that she's going to have time in her day to like respond to me. Um, so I never would comment on her videos or anything. I would watch them. And um, then, oh, by the way, if, if you are new here, hello and welcome. Uh, Mr. Kong's mom is my best friend. Her name is Melanie and she is here on YouTube. Her channel name is Mr. Kong's mom. Um, most of you know that though. <laughs> most of you know who she is. So 
but it wasn't until she had a mommy makeover. So she had a mommy makeover, she had a tummy tuck, she had a breast reduction, and she documented the entire process. Um, and I, I knew I wanted a breast reduction and I didn't know anyone who had been through a breast reduction before. So I made a comment and just said, you know, I, I think I had some questions and she said, hey, here's my email. If you have questions, like I'm happy to help answer any of the questions that you may have. This was the best decision that I made and absolutely, like, I'm an open book. And so we connected because of that. So we connected because, because of that. And then um, I was like a little thank you. I sent her some Scentsy just to say like, I know you love home fragrance and I love home fragrance. And the fact that you took the time out of your busy day and all of the subscribers you have and the fact that like you took the time to like really like address my questions and insecurities that I had about having the surgery. Um, it just, it meant a lot to me. And so I, I sent her a little gift and it's been, the rest is history. And she, we um, exchanged phone numbers and she, cause I said, you know, I'm, I'm getting the surgery done. I'm getting the surgery done. I'm so excited and this and that. And I had some other questions and she said, well, I, I, you know, keep me posted. Let me know like how you're doing. I want to, I want to know. And so we exchanged phone numbers and like I said, the rest is history. We've literally talked every single day ever since. <laughs> and that was, gosh, was that 2000? 15 or 16 2015 or 16 and we've talked every single day since <laughs> and we've just become really really close um and i i couldn't imagine my life without her in it she's um one of the most amazing people and we have a lot of things that are very similar we have a lot of differences as well but it's just we are so fun. We are such a good time. <laughs> so I am so thankful for you too, because that's, like I said, that's how we met. And I'll, like I said, I'll always remember the, the moment when I like, because she has another friend, Lisa. And so when he, when she told her husband that I was going to come and visit, he was thinking it was the other Lisa because that's what made sense to him. <laughs> so when he's like, who's this broad in my house? <laughs> And so she's like, oh yeah, no, uh, I met her on YouTube. <laughs> He's just like, great. There's some psychopath that you met on YouTube that's sleeping in our house with our child. This is great. <laughs> um, but no, they are absolutely amazing people. And um, I'm just, I'm so happy that, I'm happy that I like just had the courage to even like, like ask her any questions. Cause who knows? I mean, if I would have just like not said anything, like we would not be as close as we are. I, I would still be watching her videos and, and not even commenting because I wouldn't think that she had the, the time or energy or effort, not effort, but time or energy to like address comments. But like, that's, that's the thing about YouTube. Like every, every, I shouldn't say every, but for the most part, all creators, we're just, we're just people. And we are looking at and reading every single comment, no matter how many subscribers you have, whether you have two, 200, 2 million, like I'm pretty sure like most creators are reading and connecting with their subscribers because if they're not connecting with their subscribers, what else do they have here on this platform, right? So there you have it. That is how I met my bestie, Melanie. All right, friends. So there is all of the questions and some answers to your questions from the last Q and A, um, as well as over on Instagram and emails. I appreciate you guys so, so much. And like I said, the next one, I believe is gonna be January 15th and it's going to be live with my husband, Sean. We are gonna put him on the hot seat <laughs> and we are going to answer your questions live here on YouTube um, and address them. The, the lives are, they're, they're recorded and so they will go up after. So depending on what time, if you're not able to hop on live, it will be, it will be recorded and put up on our channel um, just like a regular video. So, all right, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I know these videos are always super long. I appreciate you guys so, so much. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like this type of content, if you like the Q and A's, if you like the really long videos. <laughs> um, if you're new, please subscribe. If you already subscribed, be sure to hit the notification bell. That way you stay up to date with all things, well, everything. It's not just Sensi here when we're talking about the Q and A. So have an amazing day, you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.